Hello and welcome to another budget and Lego video. Now today what we are going to be talking about, you just see here, Stephen's holding it for me, is kind of scan tools and oscilloscopes. Video is going to go out more to the DIYer and the guy that's maybe thinking about maybe getting into mechanics or something like that. It's all well and good watching videos, reading books and stuff like that on anything, but you will not get the sense of how to do it by just watching videos or reading books. And I'm talking about anything now, because especially with mechanics, if, if you want to get into this field, there is a feel, there is a smell. You know, when a car comes in, you know, with and it just comes with experience, you, you, you know, a lot of problems you can kind of hear when they come in before they even get to you. Like I did a turbo there a few months ago, and as the guy pulled in, he wind down his window, I said, your turbo's gone. And he kind of looked at me as if it had, you know, because you can hear these things. You can smell them. You can see them. And you only get that with experience. Hand, hon, hand, hon. And, hand. <laughs> hand on experience. Um, this is the only way. So what we're going to talk about today is, because I get a lot of questions about kind of scan tools and about um, oscilloscopes and you know what's a good waveform, what's a bad waveform and all this sort of stuff and again it comes down to experience. So a scan tool and um, an oscilloscope are hand in hand and they are a must, they are a must. They've been used for years and with modern vehicles the way they're going they're just a must. You don't have to go for mad expensive ones. I've seen some really cheap oscilloscopes online. Um, yes, obviously the more money you spend, the better you get, but you don't need to go out and spend thousands. I've seen some really cheap kind of scan tools that are PC based and they do give you live readings and stuff like that. So that's handy to look at waveforms and stuff with live readings. Um, so what I'm not gonna go into like what oscilloscopes to buy or what kind of scan tools, but I'm just gonna go through a few things you should do to get used to it and the most important thing in my opinion is you need to get a car that is running and is running good i'm going to show you in the car behind me now you use your own car you use your friend's car you use your parents car it doesn't matter whose car you use even if you are starting out you you could say to the customer okay we will service your car and I'll do some more checks and I'll do them for free. And you can say, you know, you're gonna check the health of the car and you can do the checks for free um, because that will help you in the long run. It, there's, no, there's no ifs, buts about it. It will help you in the long run. So what all you really need is you need a piece of paper, a pen and some sort of scope, essentially. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna plug into a car that is running well so when we check something like a map sensor um you know an egr valve um o2 sensors any sensor really on the car crank sensor cam sensor abs sensor doesn't really matter when you plug it in and you get that waveform you know that waveform is good to that car because the car is running perfectly it, there's no point trying to get and put scan tools on and look at a waveform that's bad because if it's bad you don't know what's good so it's pointless looking at a car that's broke look at a car that is good running perfectly we're going to see some live data and we're going to also do some uh, waveforms and live data again is crucial you know you can see all the data pids for the airflow for absolutely everything and again what you do is you just write the car down so whether it's a uh, well, it doesn't really matter, write the car down on top of a piece of paper, what engine size is, what year, and then copy everything down so you know if the uh, map sensor is reading whatever, or this, and you'll know that that's good for the car ticking over. If you want, you can then drive down the road, you can start recording some live data, you can check back on it so you know what to look for. Also, it's good to check the cars when they're cold and also when they are hot because you do get different readings for different things. So that's a good thing to check, you know. So you'll know then when you're, if a car comes in and it's hot, you know what you're looking for. You know, if a car comes in on a recovery truck and it's cold, again, you know what you're looking for. I'm not gonna go mad into it in this video because you could just do hours upon hours upon hours of it. We're just gonna show some very basic things. One thing I would always say to you, if you can, is get cam and crank 
uh, correlations because they're the things you're going to be using quite a lot so you can see if the timing has slipped or if it's not running properly you can see because by the time it's slipped it's too late i always mean to get cam and crank correlations when a when a car comes in on every car i do forget sometimes and sometimes you're just too busy there's loads of reasons why but if you can this will if you spend a few months doing this this will get you more experience than you you could ever imagine it's okay sitting in class reading books and all that that'll get you some of the way but hands-on experience taste smell the feel you know just loads of things that you can do it's like i said you can read in a book how to remove a broken bolt but when you're actually there feeling it you can tell before the bolt's gonna break so you can maybe do something different you can only do these things by physically doing it yourself we're going to be using the various today um, but like i said there's loads of different tools out there um, i have seen some really cheap um, pc based um, oscilloscopes and pc based software that you know will not break the bank um yes it's like everything like i did explain before you do get what you pay for so if you spend two thousand pound on a scope it's going to be better than a hundred pound scope but you don't need to go and spend the two thousand pound scope first so we're going to go through just a couple of things i'm going to plug it into the car we're going to read some live data on it and um like i said you can just then note down on your own car what's good or bad or indifferent or sorry you're going to note down what is good because there is nothing wrong with this car this car is running absolutely fine so we're okay um now i suppose there is maybe a slight variable where the car you happen to be working on let's say for example um for example let's say your catholic converter is on its way out and you read the 202 sensors and you think that's good so there is going to be slight variations on this um but it's still going to give you, however you look at it, it's still going to give you a really good idea. Um, and honestly, this, you will learn more doing this than you will doing anything, essentially. It, it really is going to be quite good. So what we're going to do first is we're just going to plug this in and we're just going to read some live PIDs. And again, different cars have different tests. Fords, because this is a Ford behind me. It has a key on engine off key on engine on I, I kind of go through that but just be aware there's different tests for different cars the more expensive scan tool you have the more bi-directional controls you have the more the more information is built in but again you can't always go off that this has a lot of information built in but it's not always correct um, I was doing a VBT sensor on a BMW and the information that was in this was completely and utterly wrong we still fixed the problem and I did film it that's going to be up shortly um but it did it, it took a lot longer because i didn't have the right information but we still got there in the end and that's all that matters um and we got there and bmw didn't the main dealer didn't so that's more brownie points for me but anyway so yeah we're just going to go through some live data first and then we'll go through some simple waveforms by plugging into some sensors that i can find i'm not going to do not going to do too many but it'll give you an idea and then it's you need to go out and kind of do your own homework um because honestly like i said this will help you physically doing it yourself will help you no end so let's get into some uh, let's get into some data and let's see what's rocking sorted right this is not going to be the best car to show you with because it's a diesel and it's quite loud so i am going to put a uh, petrol car on the lift in a second it's just this is on the lift now so i might as well go through it we have some data pids and obviously there is a difference between petrol and diesel uh, the modern diesels you've got fuel pressure rails sensors and stuff like that so there is there is a slight bit of difference but if you look at all this data and you get used to it you know a lot of the repairs will come second nature especially on petrol cars with fuel trims and stuff i'm not going to go into all this and what all these mean because this is not what the video is about the video is about getting you used to seeing what sort of data you have how to interpret it and the only way you can do it like i said is by just doing it so we've got a few data pids up here but what we're going to do the car is, car is off to have a look at what these are with the car is off 
and what it is when the car is running because you know if, if you get some conflicting data like for example it says vehicle speed let's say if that's at 20 miles an hour well then you know you've got a problem there already because the vehicle isn't moving if you've got a temperature sensor and it says it's fully warmed up when the car is cold again you know you've you can kind of and you can see these things because temperature sensors can cause all sorts of problems and that's where people get start getting muddled up and start replacing a lot of things when it only turns out a temperature sensor and when you go into this you can see what the temperature what the temperature sensor what the temperature sensor is running at you can see all that and you can make diagnosis from that so it's really really handy so what i suggest you do if you've got something like this you, you don't have to write down you can just take a screenshot like i can just press that button there it's now taken a screenshot of that so that makes life handy. If you've got a computer, you just take a, a screenshot of your computer, saves you writing everything down. We're gonna start this and we're gonna see, also, especially with the diesel, we can see the fuel uh, pressure rail. So even though we know this is good, we can still tell if the pump's maybe on its way out. And you can kind of, you can see problems before they happen. So you can either tell the customer, look, you know, you're going to need to get this sorted soon and blah, you know, and maybe help them not break down and then they'll keep coming back to you. So there's loads and loads of reasons why it's vitally important to know what all this is about. The other thing is what you have to be so careful about is my ignition is now on and be very careful that it doesn't take long for your battery to wear down, especially when you're doing diagnostics. If your battery isn't charged, you can get some very, very funny readings here. Um, so make sure you've got a good battery. If your battery's going down, put a battery charger on it. Start the car every once in a while. You do need a good battery to get proper data. Hopefully you can see that with not a lot of glare. So that's obviously the car off. We're now gonna start the car and see what happens. I think that just shows you why it is very important to have a good battery. Now I know the battery is going in this car, but I haven't had it on for long and as you can see, I now have to jump start it. Right, so now again, you can see our numbers have changed. Like I said, I'm not going to go into it, but a few things you really want to look out for is obviously your, um, your airflow, your fuel pressure, intake temperature, cooling temperature, things like that you do want to kind of look at quite regularly because these are the, these are the things that, you know, can cause you problems and it could be very, very simple to fix. So again, you can take a screenshot or write it all down, doesn't really matter. This is the sort of day you just need to keep looking at, looking at, looking at and all different types of cars you will start seeing patterns. Once you start seeing patterns, you'll know what's good or bad yourself. Um, and things then become second nature. But honestly, you need to be doing this yourself is the only way you're gonna really learn. And it just, it just honestly, it's gonna make your life so much better. As you can hear, this is a diesel, so it's very loud. I'm gonna now get a petrol car on the lift just so I can talk over things. I can have the bonnet lifted up and we can look at sensors without having to try and shout over a big diesel engine. Just keep testing, 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 testing yourself. When you come across a car that's bad, save everything. Save all your data, save your waveforms, save everything. The more you save, the more you've got, the easier it is going to be to come back. If you have another car that's the same and it's not starting properly, it's not doing something, you happen to have a capture of this, well, you can compare it and then you can see what's good or bad or indifferent. But like I said, you wanna test it with the engine off, see what it's like with the engine on, cold, with the engine on when it's warm, there's a few tests you can do. Another thing you must look at is on a petrol car is the short term fuel trim and the long term fuel trim. Once you start understanding fuel trims, it's amazing what you can do. This car is running good, essentially what we are looking for is essentially zero we've got minus 1.5 on the long term and we are going to minus uh, between 2.3 2.3 2.4 2.5 2.6 2.7 2.8 2.9 2.10 2.11 2.12 2.13 2.14 2.15 2.16 2.17 2.18 2.19 2.20 2.21 2.22 2.23 2.24 
1.6. So when you put them both together, they're in and around about zero, which is what you're looking for. Um, but again, fuel trims, what you can earn off fuel trims is vacuum leaks, misfires. It, I mean, the list goes on and on and on. So if you're looking at a car and tick over and they're both rich or both lean, you, you, it just gives you a better idea. Like I said, I'm not going to really go into it on this video because it would just take too long to go into everything. But to just you want to look at, mis uh, at um, fuel trim data. Whenever you get a car in that's acting up, also go to your fuel trim data. Because once you can recognize if a car has got a misfire or a vacuum leak, you'll see what that does to the fuel trims. So when you, when you come accustomed to it, you can just look at your fuel trims and you can tell straight away what problem you have. But again, it takes time. The more cars you can look at, the better. But definitely look at fuel trims. I've customized this list because there's just way too much for me to go through on this video. But you definitely want to look at fuel trims, 100%. Also, another good thing to look at, because it all corresponds with fuel trims, is your O2 sensors. Um, so if your O2 sensors are stuck rich or lean or doing something weird, look at your um, short and long term because it all helps towards the diagnostics. Um, and honestly, it can save you so much time. Now, um, I'm looking at the 202 sensors. I've just been doing a bit on this because I've got to check everything out for the customer. And as you can see, um, I've done a video on this but it just gives you an idea of what to look for so just through scan data without even me plugging in i can tell that this cat is good there is nothing wrong with the catalytic converter in this car um just from them two data pids at the top and also from the uh, short and long-term fuel trims you can just tell that straight away um we are now going to get into start testing some um some sensors in the engine but honestly you need to spend time with this once you've tested a good few cars you know take screenshots do everything you need to do if you're unsure and a lot things a lot more things will just come so much easier i promise it just takes time to do it right i was going to do more testing and do more waveforms but i just don't have the time and like i said anyway you need to be doing this yourself rather than kind of you know watching other people do it because it will honestly make everything a million times better but what i also need to quickly go through is also you need to know bits about your scope as well because i'm actually on something at the minute i'm not going to tell you what it is yet i want you to tell me down in the comments what this waveform is now i don't want you know like professional mechanics to tell me i want to see if we we, we get any um you know either diyers or someone that's wants to be a mechanic so i don't want any professionals telling me what it is but to give you an idea as you can see this 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 waveform seems to come in and out whenever it feels like it as you can see it's just come there and there's nothing then it'll come again so depending on what you're testing you need to set your scope up in different ways and again i can go through this but it just you know there's so many things to know you just can't do it in one video this video is just to show you that, you know, just test things, just do things and get used to things. Touch it, smell it, feel it. It will be a million times better for you. We need a trigger on this to, for us to see this waveform. As soon as I put a trigger on it, bang. Oh, let's just move that trigger. just triggered on the wrong spot for me now so I want somebody to tell me what they think that waveform is again not a experienced mechanic or anything like that just someone that's maybe wants to learn or you know thinking about becoming a mechanic or whatever um, so I had to set up a trigger because if I didn't set up a trigger I wouldn't get this waveform so you do need to know you just again it, it's just practice if you practice with this sort of stuff it will become second nature and you will find so so more problems so much easier rather than trying to guess um so there's the waveform and what you can also do is uh you know you can do this the same with the computer you can actually save this waveform you can go back into it you can zoom into it you can do all sorts with it 
um, you know, and you can essentially study it because there is some things in there, believe it or not, that is very, very important. There's more than one thing that can tell you what I'm testing, if it's good or bad. Now, this one is good. This car is running okay. Um, and if I was testing it, I would maybe, well, I would zoom into it a lot more, but we're just doing this for a video. So I want someone to tell me what that is, if they can. And yeah, just practice, honestly, practice makes perfect. Right, so yes, it's as simple as I said, just practice on as many cars as you can. Get used to seeing data, to seeing kind of what, what is good. You will start seeing a pattern when a car comes in that is um, well broken down, you will fix it a million times easier. So that's it really, it's just, it's like everything. The more you practice, the better you get. It's really as simple as that. I will do in the future more videos on kind of, you know, catching waveforms and oscilloscopes and testing sensors and stuff. Um, but honestly, doing it yourself, just getting used to things like that is 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 going to be better than than kind of you know me showing you how to do it because you'll 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 get the idea. But we will do it in other videos. It's just going to take time because, as you know, it does take a long time to do videos with other work on. Anyway, blah, 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 blah. So, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope it helped. You know, there'll be, same again, links down here, links up here. But most importantly, don't forget, get your hands dirty. See you for the next one.